Okay, may I hotel, may I hotel, this is Sarah Satepa around my eye. I want to share some information with you real quick. All right, this is uh, Ashra Crazy, African Origin of Christianity DVD. I got this off of, I got this off of YouTube. So um, I want you all to check it out. This is some really good information that I'm sure you could find a use for. From the temples of Ipanasut, Karnak is called today. Sahu Nepet, Orion was Lord of the Heavens. So here we see that this is Sahu, this is Neb, and this is Pet. So our ancestors saw Orion was Lord of the Heavens. They carved it on the temples, but why did they put it there? That's what we want to look at. They saw, as we go back to the scriptures, we'll bring the scriptures in the court of law. Well, is it in the scriptures? Yes, it's in the scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> and Amos. Chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Seek at him that maketh the seven stars of Orion. Uh oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seek at him that maketh the seven stars of Orion. Well, our ancestors saw that Asar, our spiritual father, and the Zeptepi, for our spirit to go back to him, to rise up our caress, we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the constellation of Orion long before. It was in Amos, and the scriptures was even in existence. Amen. This is the Zeptepi, or the first time of creation. The God of Sar, way before Jesus, they stole all this ideal about God being in the heavens above from us ancient comedic people. We knew the spirit of God to be everywhere. We knew the constellation of Orion to house the God of Sar. See, the representation of the body right there is with the stars. One, two, three four, five, six, seven. The European Yuletide with the three horses is the right there. With those three horses that you see that they always have on those Christmas cards, they, that's how they are lined up. You notice this one is placed over a little bit from these two. Here on Earth, this line got to go down. You're going to see those pyramids at the bottom. This is the way they aligned the pyramids on Earth. The ancient Kemetic people did, way before there was any thought of any white people anywhere in anyone's mind. We had already had a relationship with the cosmos, which made us be able to pinpoint specific placement on the earth to put pyramids where when the sunlight rises to certain positions, it would make that V shape like that, right on the top. And that's how you had to be really good to start from ground zero and make a structure that big and make sure you place it right exactly where you fathom, where you and your mind came up with the concept of you wanting that point to be. From watching the sun rise or come to its epitome so many times, you were able to be in position of knowledge to see where the sunlight will strike your structure that you build from the ground. Look what I'm talking about. See, this is what I tell you about the woman walking on earth. See, here goes Asar. He's doing the perfect representation of what I mean by that. See, do you see the V? But see, it's not the woman walking on earth. It's the it's the it's not the man. It's the woman. But it's a sar is reenacting it in the heavens. That's why I say God will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So here he goes as the father of all. But remember, he has a mother, which is the universal uterus, which is space that he is encapsulated in. So he is the perf the God of the perfect black. That means he is the God of the uterus. He is the God of all the cosmic vaginas. That's why I tell you my job is to go through space and calibrate everything that's out of calibration. That's what my soul specific job is. And you people here on earth has got it so bad that you have the nerves to want to try to deny the person who can deny you your overall sustainment or overcompensate you all your sustainment. So this is what this is all about. It's all about us African people were able to see in our mind the concepts of the spiritual energy that we see in these lights now. All right, we can see them from being from the subtle realm before they even manifest as starting with the God of Sar. Now you're not going to see me here on earth with these light ships and all these UFOs and me making all these videos and talking all this talk to you and all this substantiation to me claiming to be who I am and overlook me and try to 
you know, ration me out. Don't even give me anything on my own planet. I want you to listen real good to what I'm saying. You're going to try to deny me on my own planet and then get mad at me when I show you the powers that I have. I tell you, okay, we'll make a school bus flip over. We'll do this, we'll do that, all these fires. It's because I'm trying to get your attention. Now, that's love. And then you want to get mad at me when I'm sitting here saying the problem is that you guys are ignorant. Okay, now that's the father talking to his children saying, listen, you're ignorant. Okay, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but you're not thinking properly because you've been given wrong information. Your whole tabloids of thought of projections is all messed up. And I'm here to change all that. I'm here to change your consciousness so I don't have to burn your ass up. And see, my anger and everything, and a lot of the way my demeanor has been, it's been because of the way the world is. And I'm upset about seeing people suffering and going through so much unnecessary abuse and seeing that it's self-inflicted. And then when I come down here and try to explain to everybody why this is going on, I get rejected and find myself having to go out here and go through all this stuff and this striping. For bullshit garbage, food that ain't even food that the sun made for us to be eating. It's garbage that somebody done put their hands all over and tampered with. And now they selling you garbage full of chemicals and, and additives that you get addicted to. And, and they make you die early. So see, the God of the heavens has came here on earth. And like I was saying back to the woman. This is how we always design those pyramids to come where the sunlight will come down. You can see it, the X, if you look at it. Look at his body. Go to the shoulder, and then come this way. You can see that X. That's who Asar is. You see, that's exactly who he is. You can see the X right there. Now, if he had his arms raised in the right perfect, in the right way, manner, but I know you can see what I'm getting at. Don't don't make it complicated. All right. You see. But this is what this is all about. This is our ancient mythology that they stole and made their Bible with. It says, Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion, and turn it the, the day to night, I think it says, or night to day, I think is what it says. But they're showing you this is our ancient stuff that they took and plagiarized. And look, the birthday, December the 25th, which is my birthday. Okay, my birthday is December the 25th. I was born under the constellation of uh, Aquarius. I, well, I can't be sure. I got to check that out to be sure. I can Our ancestors saw through the constellation, through the heavenly body, through astrotheology, through the cosmos, the first divine mother and father for them to live for eternity, a set represented Sahu called Ceres today, and a star represented Orion. Our spirit. And you can see them together in the heavens as the mother and father of all mankind of earth. That's who they are. And as you can see, Asar is holding the star in his hand. As him and his wife both are holding the, the plow, the staff, with all the icons of it, of wisdom and control and power given to them by the universal cosmos mother and father that we carved on the temples, here we see the earliest story of a Tsar who had an evil brother named Set. Many versions of the story who got 72 conspirators to crucify him. Here we see this is long before the Cain and Abel story. You got it carved on the temples. And although you see it carved on the temples on the outside, still on the inside they're still beautifully painted black. But it's through this story of the union of a Tsar and a Tsar's resurrection, through the union of a Tsar and a Set, they have a holy child. It's told on the papyruses where the name paper came from. We see Tahuti, we did not worship animals, but Tahuti, the divine netter, the messenger corresponding to Gabriel in the gospel, announces to the goddess of Set, the chief give a divine immaculate conception and virgin birth. So here you have this spiritual story where Tahuti came, who was a spiritual law, said a set would have a holy child. This is long before Gabriel, the angel of the Lord, came to the back door and told Mary that she was going to have an immaculate conception. Now, our story was more spiritual because Tahuti gave the call, and Amun came to Asar and said that your wife, Aset, would have an immaculate conception. Now, I don't know about you, brother, but your, if your wife came to you and said the angel of the Lord in the back room came and said that uh, she had an immaculate conception, I don't know if you go for it or not. I don't know. But that's belief. On these temples, right here, Dandara, at the temple of Hederu, let's go inside these temples, brothers and sisters, and going inside these temples, here we can see an ancient spiritual story where Asar 
Curiosity is born in a manger. That's right. Well, one of the things that I make sure of is that we get accounts that's not going to be revealed to tour groups who come through here. That's what I try to do. Reveal the information that would normally would be passed by and not even mentioned to many of the Europeans because it would conflict with their European Western world through their own European white supremacy thinks that everything started with them or think that their whole European Christian concept started with them. See the cow right there? That's head of rule. That's what I wanted to show you. You can see her over the manger. See? And then when you think about the nativity scene with baby Jesus, they plagiarized this. These two cows. This is head of rule. What I tell you guys about the universal mother. Mother nature. Okay? That which encompasses all. The big vagina that we are all in. This is what they were putting in stone. This is exactly what they were putting in stone. And I was, that's why I was telling you, you always have two fallacies. See? One. Two. One on each side. Just like you see right there. With the hole in the middle. And you guys say, what is he talking about? Well, these were like pylons is what they were calling them. But they always put two on each side to represent. Just like um, when you see... A female, she has her husband and her son. You see, and for the most part, she's in the middle to keep the balance like that. But after a star had became slain, and his and her son had rose into kinghood, they had a star in the middle on the altar, as as if not completely there, but there as a manifestation with his son and his son. But then they had the mother sitting on the other side, opposite. Her son, Haru, on the side of her heart also, he's there holding it down with her who's always around. That's what all that represents. That the spiritual energy of the female will always be that which encompasses all. And that's the reason why even though, see a lot of people don't understand this. I might be wrong, but I'm going to tell you what I see. When, when God is a set with to revenge or to get her spiritual Copulation on with the side. The reason she transformed herself into the bird is because she went to the spirit world. Once you once you reach your spiritual essence and your 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 ka or your ba your ba bird, I think it is. Your ka is your spirit. Your ba is your soul. Which one is? I think it's the ba bird. I could be wrong. I haven't read those books in so long, and I could get confused. So I advise everyone to to get the books and read them yourself and study them. But it's either your ka or your ba, which is to have a zoomorphic representation as a bird behind the pharaoh's head. Okay, this bird uh, said took the form on and she went to the spirit world and she had a copulation with Asar in the spirit world. And then she came back from the spirit world impregnated from when she ventured into the spirit world to see her, her slain husband. Okay, now I believe that the reason for the missing phallus is because when she did have a son, Haru, he wasn't able to be that part to her. She put the kingdom and everything back together, but she was not able to find the phallus of her husband because it was missing. They say it had been eaten by some predators. Catfish or something had swallowed it up. So now we find the Vatican having the phallus in the belly of it, and the Vatican being as predacious as ever. This is how foreseeing and how the concept of thought these people had in their minds. They were very, very wise, and they wrote these stories from being able to be the clairvoyant people they were. They knew that the day would come that the black man would be denied regeneration, in other words, the seeds of the black man would be scorned and looked as being worthless. So now you got everybody on the 